What do you think? Just unscrew. Spring, brass ball in there. Yes. This is the little slider. It's a little rotating cam thing that drives the, the display for the variable speed and it's it's not even supposed to be that complicated, but these oil field guys, whoever the gentlemen were that worked on this mill, welded this washer on there, and uh, I'm going to try to remake this. head screw I've ever attempted. Very special shoulder shoulder screw. There's a little spacer ring there. Not free, but it's it's looser. But I this I think this has got to come out. And the only way it comes this comes out is when this screw is withdrawn. the gearbox off and um, I can push the quill I can push the quill up and down a lot more easily now the screws were loosened and it was just slightly off I feel like I should just be able to crank this out oh there it goes it came out oh man Well, there's the spindle. Um, it's very massive compared to the millwright. It's just it maybe twice the size, but um, or twice the weight. It's not bad. Hopefully that it's not bent or jacked up. convinced that this needs this much grease. I think I'm going to give up tonight, but there's some kind of little a roll pin that's stuck in there. This whole thing is still connected with the the worm gear is still driving. <clears throat> if you want to take this plate off, um, if you look in the manual, it gives you pretty specific instructions. The, the instructions for the later model are actually more clear than the earlier one. But the first thing you have to do, you loosen this little set screw, um, set screw down here, and then you should be able to pull this pinion out or unscrew this pinion out. Um, Unless this is removed, you can't really, this isn't going to withdraw because it's got a hop, 
it would have to hop over that pinion there. Then you're going to want to undo these 3 8 cap screws here. And now there's no way to pull on this. Uh, so how do you actually get it out? Well, set screw. And what's happening is you're going to drive that in. This it only works for these two holes, I think. But push that down in there. And what's that? What's doing is this portion of the head is threaded with that seven sixteenth screw and you just put them in like a ways so that they have enough thread to grab on. But this cap is threaded with, um, sorry, those are 3 eighths, the 3 eighths set screw, but this cap is threaded with the 7 sixteenths uh, thread. And I kind of necked these down so that they wouldn't, I don't know if I needed to do that, but What's happening is it's it's attaching to the threaded portion of the cap, but when it hits that set screw, it's going to start pushing on that set screw, and it's going to start pushing the, the cover out and away from this yoke. And this is a fairly tight, it's very accurately machined bore, so there's really no way you can um, pull on it unless you were to, like, I don't know, slide hammer or something, but this is really the best way to do it. So then, the other detail about this is that inside here, there's that coil spring that um, lifts the head. It takes the weight off of the quill as the quill goes up and down, because um, there's a pinion in there that, that lowers and raises the quill, and it has it creates this kind of upward pressure to give you this sort of easier time of lowering and raising the quill. But that's a coil spring, flat coil spring, that um, it's similar to a bridge port. And if it's uncoiled completely, which could easily be the case, then it will actually press against the outer, um, it'll press against the, the bore inside this cap. But if you crank it and you put some pressure on it, then it will coil smaller and it will stay in its place and you'll be able to pull this cap off without... So there it is. There's the, co the coil spring. And if this is coiled up, then um, you'll have an easier time of, you know, if the thing could explode in your face or whatever. So I would wear a uh, face mask and gloves and stuff because it could really cut your hands if you're trying to remove that thing. But I'm just going to leave the tension on it. The reason I'm going in here is because I forgot to put this nut on. And um, this, the coil actually slips into that little slot. There's the end where it's bent over and it slips in there. And that's how it kind of holds in place. So that's how you get the... And then you can see the set screws that you drove in earlier there's one there and one there, and they're still in there. You're going to want to take those out and then put the whole thing back together and put that pinion back in. So that's how it's done. Okay, you can see the socket head screws that are on the outside of that flange. And this one, yeah, <laughs> this one I tried to put a set screw in there and went bloop right inside the chamber so now I have to open the back but um, it's, what's cool about this is um, this, this kind of yoke that the thing rides in the fit of this is just fantastic you can just feel just how precisely seated it is in there um, that even when it's all loose it's still kind of binding like that, which is just, I think, indicating just how tight of a, how precise of a fit that is.
All right, well, there's definitely a set screw in here, and it's kind of tricky. Okay, there's a nice little gear. It says Boston on it. That was on the inside, and the little set screw was holding that in place. Here we go. There's another set screw here, but what that's there for, this one's a little bigger. So this is a very small pin. <clears throat> oh, I see. It's one of those of that type. There's the nut. This whole thing is threaded, which I thought it was just a shaft, straight shaft. The spring retainer, this, this, the edge of the spring goes in there. It's a little looser. Well, I don't like to bang on things. Um, I didn't see anything in about that little pin that looked like it was obstructing uh, that side. All I could see was that it looks like it should definitely come out. So I was tapping and then there, it's this whole flange is actually what was coming out. So there we go. Oh, that's finally out. Okay, no sooner did I have that out when I realized how vulnerable this is, because this whole thing can just slip out of that yoke. All right, well, I'll just leave it there for now. I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it rotates. It doesn't rotate more than 45 degrees in either direction, I guess. got somehow like mushroomed over. Of course now it's not cooperating. There's a worm gear. There's a little spacer. just no way to get leverage underneath it and yes there's there's a snap ring under there and of course that's not going to end well if you try to force that out <sighs> okay
and you bread it whole there, you can lever out. Never seen a clip quite like that before. I wish I had that on camera because it went pop really loud like a gun after about five minutes of heating. It's still really on there.